What makes the elephant charge his tusk in the misty mist and the dusky dusk? What makes the muskrat guard his musk? Courage. Okay, so the cowardly lion's definition of courage doesn't really actually make a great deal of sense. But I think somehow the cowardly lion speaks to us about the nature of courage. His story has something to tell us as our story. I mean, for one thing, his reaction when he first encounters Dorothy and the Tin Woodsman and the Scarecrow in the forest is the epitome of a lack of courageous response. He feels threatened because there are strangers and he comes out swinging, in his case, literally swinging, challenging and aggressing and roaring and putting up a fuss because he's afraid. And that just seems to describe so much of what is going on in our world these days, so much posturing and yelling and roaring and all out of some basis of fear. And I suppose that some of the fear comes from people who are used to a certain version of the world, a version in which they are empowered, a version in which they are normal and feeling threatened by versions of the world that don't hold them at the center. But I think that there's also a certain amount of our aggressive, hostile fear reaction that goes much deeper, goes to a recognition that our planet, our way of living is threatened by climate change in ways that we totally feel unprepared to deal with. And so there is an undercurrent of anxiety, of trauma, that is informing us all. And perhaps informing is not the best word because fear doesn't make us respond in the most informed possible way. Fear makes us react, makes us do whatever it must be done in the moment, in the surge of adrenaline to fight or to flee or to freeze. And it takes courage to respond in some different way, to find another way out besides that raging and that roaring. And the cowardly lion believes that the wizard is going to be the one who can give him that gift, which turns out not to be true. But it also is true that the cowardly lion does get the gift of courage, and he gets it from his friends. He gets it from choosing to travel with Dorothy and the Tid Woodsman and the Scarecrow. He gets it from being part of a fellowship, part of a team, part of a friendship. They give him courage. I learned recently that in the Buddhist sutras, there are three main ways of giving that are endorsed. You can give material goods, generosity to give people things that they need, and you can give Dharma, the teaching, you can give wisdom, and you can give fearlessness. What an interesting way of thinking about what we can do for one another, that we can give fearlessness. Now, the most traditional way of giving fearlessness is to give people protection. The samurais gave the gift of fearlessness. And there are ways in which we can give one another protection. Those of us who have various kinds of privilege, whether it be financial or racial or based in gender or education, those of us who have privilege can leverage that privilege for the protection of others, for giving other people fearlessness, the ability to move through the world in a way that mitigates the forces of oppression. But I think that giving fearlessness goes far beyond offering protection. 
we give fearlessness Ironically, when we admit to our fear, when we stand in the face of the things that terrify us and say, yes, this is so scary. I mean, that's the point at which the cowardly lion becomes friends with the crew after Dorothy smacks him down and he admits that he has no courage at all. He moves from being the attacker to being one of them, to being a friend in his vulnerability. When he says, yes, yes, I'm afraid. I don't know what to do. Help me. It doesn't mean that none of them are afraid from there out, but it means at least that they are afraid together. The reality is that for us social beings, isolation is scary, is terrifying, and our world can be such an isolating place that when we simply are able to be together in our fear to say, yes, this is hard, what do we do now? We give one another fearlessness. We give one another possibility. And when we choose one another as companions, we call one another into courage. Dorothy steps up and faces the cowardly lion in his fierce attack on them when she feels like Toto is being threatened. And you do not mess with a girl's little dog, let me tell you. It turns out that love turns us from cowardly lions into fierce mama bears. And there is a need in the world for some fierce mama bears, which might in some ways look like the rage of the cowardly lion in his fear, that lashing out. But the aggressiveness of fear is unthinking. It just smacks out wherever the threat is perceived without any real process behind it. But the aggression, if you want to call it aggression, of the mama bear is clear-eyed. It's based in love. It knows what it wants and it knows what it wants to protect. And it finds a way to keep safe those it loves, which is a very different action than just flailing about in fear. Fearlessness allows us to choose. Fearlessness allows us to stand in the situation where we find ourselves and look around and opt for love. And sometimes opting for love is gentle and sometimes opting for love is fierce, but when we opt for love, we give fearlessness. When we choose one another as companions on the journey, we have a way to make it through the forest. And we know that there are lions and tigers and bears, oh my, but it's possible that the lions could turn out to be friends. It's possible that we might just walk this path together. And it's possible that together we might just find our way home.